I'm making my favorite chocolate cake today. I call it Black Magic Cake. It is based on an old Depression era recipe that doesn't use eggs or milk. It doesn't use any dairy. It's basically a little flour, sugar, cocoa, oil, and a couple of other ingredients. And I'll show you how I adapt this and why I call it Black Magic Cake. But I will tell you right now, this is one of the moistest, most richly chocolate flavored cake recipes that I have. It is a small sized cake. This is going to fit into uh, a brownie pan, a small sized pan. This is not a 9 by 13 cake. Okay, I've got a 1 and 1 quarter cups of all purpose flour. And that's the first ingredient. A cup of granulated sugar. Let's see, one of the other dry ingredients is the uh, baking soda, which I keep in a tight container. I believe that's a teaspoon. Let's see, a teaspoon of baking soda, which uh, will go in here. Uh, I have cocoa powder, which I pressed through with a fork to be sure that any lumps were uh, broken apart so that it will mix here thoroughly. That is uh, three tablespoons only of cocoa powder, and it's amazing how far that goes in this cake and what a rich chocolate flavor it adds. And then, oh yes, we need a uh, half a teaspoon of salt. And that I just do, that kind of measures, just a half teaspoon of the salt. See if there's anything else. Uh, baking soda, salt, okay. Those ingredients can be mixed together, as you can see. Nothing too complicated here. I don't get too fussy with this. And then you press apart three wells into these dry ingredients. And in these three wells, you will put, first we need a little bit of vinegar. We need a tablespoon of vinegar. I usually use the cider vinegar. Like I said, it's one of those old-fashioned recipes. That's going to go in one little section. I have how much oil? Was it five tablespoons of oil, I think it was? One tablespoon. Five tablespoons of vegetable oil. And that goes in a different depression. And... Uh, the uh, water then I will pour in over that. Well, it's not water. The original recipe calls for water. I use coffee, strong black coffee that's been brewed and chilled. This happens to be a double recipe of espresso that I make, but you can just make a good strong black coffee. And I pour that in starting in the, the one well, and it uh, then quickly mix it all through. You don't use an electric mixer. None of those things are necessary. You simply mix this recipe, and you don't have to worry too much if there appears to be some lumps and things in there, too. That doesn't matter. That's all going to bake right out. So here we have our batter. The batter is going into, now I don't happen to have a regular brownie pan. I'm using this, but you can see this has been uh, greased and floured. And this is going to make a very nice rounded topped small cake. The batter then goes into the cake pan. 
The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And like I said, this is a real quick and easy cake. But it is so good. I'm not a fan of cake mixes. And this is every bit as easy as using a cake mix. So now this is going into the oven at 350 degrees and it will be done in, oh, what is it, 35 minutes. And then uh, when that's finished, we'll uh, dress it up and show you the finished product. cake is done. I hope you can see that. I'm going to let it cool and then I will uh, turn it out onto this platter and I'll show you how I decorate it and finish it off. While we're waiting for the cake to cool, I want to mention one or two other things about this cake. Uh, first, vanilla is an optional ingredient. And when I make this cake without the coffee, without the strong coffee, and just use water as the liquid, I always use vanilla. Uh, I didn't use it today because of the coffee liquid in here, but once in a while I have used vanilla with the, the coffee, and I find that when I do that, it mellows out the mocha flavor, and you almost don't taste that. It's, it's just more of a, a creamier chocolate flavor. So it's strictly optional when you're using the coffee and uh, up to you, but uh, it's good either way you choose. Okay, everything's done. The cake is finished. I've turned it out onto the platter. Let's remove the uh, parchment paper. This is really important if you intend to turn the cake out and decorate it. If you don't, you don't have to use parchment paper, but if, if you are going to flip it over and put it on a platter and decorate it, then you really do need to do that. I like to just do a little dusting of powdered sugar much or as little as you like to do. It's so pretty. Put a little something green on there just for the fun of it. And when I serve this, I often like to serve it with a dollop of uh, cherry pie filling. Isn't that cute? Very nice. Uh, you can cut those into pieces and put them on a, a plate and add the cherry pie to the plate if you like. But for bringing it to a table, this is so pretty this way.